History often declares entire peoples as extinct, gone with conquest, disease, or assimilation. Yet modern genetics tells another story. The truth is that DNA doesn't vanish when a culture falls silent. It keeps moving quietly through generations, hidden inside living descendants. Millions of modern Latinos carry within them the cellular echoes of societies long thought lost, ancient islanders, indigenous nations, and faiths once driven underground. Their genes outlasted colonization, exile, and persecution. Through that survival, they transform extinction from a final end into an unseen continuity. The genome preserves what the chronicles erased. So when we speak of disappearance, we're really describing a change of form. Let's start with one of the most haunting examples, the indigenous Tainos, who were said to have vanished from the Caribbean five centuries ago. When Spanish colonists first arrived in the Caribbean at the end of the 15th century, the Taino people met them with trade and hospitality. Within decades, those same communities were devastated by violence, enslavement, and illness brought across the Atlantic. Chroniclers writing by the 1500s claimed the Taino were wiped out, an extinct people. Yet five centuries later, genetic science exposes the myth behind that word. Studies of modern Puerto Ricans and Dominicans reveal strong indigenous inheritance woven into their DNA. On average, about one-fifth of the Puerto Rican genome is indigenous, while Dominicans carry roughly 8%. But the most striking figures come from the maternal side. Mitochondrial DNA, our direct maternal lineage, passes unchanged from mother to child. Researchers have shown that more than 60% of Puerto Ricans trace that lineage back to an original Taino woman. In other words, a majority of Puerto Ricans descend through unbroken maternal lines from one of the Caribbean's first mothers. This discovery challenges the old language of extermination. What ended was a culture's political and linguistic expression, not its biology. The Taino descendants survived quietly in the DNA of those who came after the conquest, mestizo communities who spoke Spanish but carried indigenous lineages deep in their cells. Their modern descendants may identify as Puerto Rican, Dominican, or Cuban, yet molecular evidence proves that the first inhabitants of the Caribbean never completely disappeared. When we hear the word extinct, it's usually reserved for creatures, not kin. Genetically, though, humans almost never vanish completely. Alleles persist, dispersed but alive. The Taino example shows how maternal continuity can outlast every other form of memory. It's proof that the first grandmothers of the Caribbean are still present, written within the mitochondrial code of modern people. From this island legacy, our story now moves east, toward the Canary Islands, where another so-called extinct population became ancestors across the Atlantic. Long before Columbus embarked from Spanish ports, Spain had already practiced colonization closer to home. Off the northwest coast of Africa lay the Canary Islands, inhabited by the Guanches, an isolated population descended from ancient Berber groups of North Africa. For centuries they lived cut off from the mainland, developing unique customs and languages. Their isolation ended violently in the 15th century, when Castilian forces conquered the archipelago. By the 1500s, reports described the Guanches as a vanished people. Here's the problem, though. Genomic evidence paints a different picture. The modern inhabitants of the Canaries still carry roughly 20 to 30 percent Guanche ancestry in their autosomal DNA. Mitochondrial and Y chromosome studies show deep continuity. Haplogroup U6B1, a distinctive maternal lineage of North African origin, remains frequent among Canarians today, alongside the paternal marker E-M81. These lineages are signatures of the ancient islanders whose supposed extinction was more a narrative convenience than biological fact. When Spain used the Canaries as its first overseas colony, Guanche women and men were assimilated, through labor, conversion, and intermarriage, into the settler population. Those mixed descendants became part of the crews and families that later sailed to the Caribbean and the Americas. Through that migration, fragments of Guanche DNA crossed the ocean. So when researchers study Latin American genomes now, they find a faint but measurable North African component that aligns closely with modern Canary Islanders. In simple terms, that means the Guanche legacy traveled westward inside Spanish colonial gene pools. From Venezuela to Cuba to Mexico, there are now millions of people whose chromosomes carry small traces of these island ancestors. For reference, this pattern shows how colonization worked not only as a political expansion, but as a biological one. Spain's early Atlantic laboratories of empire, like the conquest of the Canaries, set the model for what would follow in the Caribbean. Soldiers, settlers, and priests departed from islands where African, European, and Guanche genes had already fused. 
they took with them that mixed heritage, embedding it deeply into the genetic foundation of the new world. What we find now is a paradox, a people declared extinct yet present in every generation that came after. Their language, names, and culture were diluted, but their DNA remained resilient, replicated each time a child was born. The Guanche story mirrors the Taino one, two island populations, both conquered early, both surviving through admixture. It reminds us that disappearance on paper often means diffusion in practice. The biological imprint of even a small pre-colonial population can persist for centuries, passed silently through mothers, fathers, and offspring who never knew the origin of their microscopic inheritance. So from the Caribbean to the Canaries, we see the same pattern repeating. Historical extinction followed by genetic resurrection. And yet, there's one more example, this time not about an island collapse, but about forced faith and survival through secrecy. The story of the Sephardic conversos shows how persecuted identity can endure in hidden chromosomes, even when belief systems and surnames changed beyond. During the late 15th century, Iberia was consumed by the Inquisition. Thousands of Jews were forced to convert or flee, while others practiced their faith in secret. They became known as conversos, nominal Christians who carried Jewish identity within their families, often whispered rather than spoken. Many eventually sought escape through the same Spanish and Portuguese ships that carried settlers to the New World. What they found there was not freedom from history, but a space where genetics would preserve what fear compelled them to hide. Scientific research now confirms the permanence of their legacy. Studies released through PubMed and other genomic databases estimate that between 10 and 20 percent of Iberian men carry paternal lineages known as haplogroups J and T, both with strong Levantine and Sephardic Jewish associations. These same Y-DNA markers appear across Latin America today, dispersed within fully assimilated populations. In Mexico, Colombia, and Brazil, researchers identify the same genetic signatures connecting modern families to Iberian converso ancestors. Here's why that matters. Conversion and assimilation erased surnames, languages, and even religious affiliation. Yet none of those changes affected chromosomes. So while the Inquisition could burn books, confiscate property, and execute heretics, it couldn't destroy the hereditary instructions already copied within each child. DNA became the ultimate archive, one impossible to censor. Take a closer look at admixture patterns. Latin American populations show modest but consistent Near Eastern components, tiny fractions that can't be explained solely by colonial contact or trade. They match the profile of Iberian Sephardic groups more closely than that of North African influences, showing that the Jewish diaspora's Iberian branch traveled with those early migrants. It's a genetic footprint of faith under persecution, one that became embedded in the biological fabric of the Americas. There's also a symbolic irony here. The same empire that expelled Jews from Spain unwittingly seeded their descendants across half the globe. Generations later, some Latin Americans who today identify as secular, Catholic, or Protestant unknowingly carry lineages once targeted by the Inquisition. The genome made survival democratic. It preserved ancestry regardless of social status or confession. Bloodline continuity accomplished what belief could not safely protect. What we find when sequencing those chromosomes is continuity hiding in plain sight. Genetic distances between Iberian converso-descended lineages and present-day Latin Americans prove nearly indistinguishable. In fact, the persistence of Y haplogroups J and T at measurable frequencies indicates that the male descendants of Sephardic Jews contributed unmistakably to the shaping of Latin populations. And the story isn't just statistical. Modern public figures, artists, and even national leaders trace partial ancestry to those Sephardic genes. In Mexico, for instance, a Jewish woman became the president of Mexico. That single episode captures the arc of this hidden continuity. Repression transformed into participation, secrecy into prominence. So while religion can convert, DNA cannot. Within the Latin American genome, those long persecuted lineages remain active, silently bridging Iberia's medieval persecutions to the plural identities of today. Through them, we see one of genetics' most fascinating patterns, how memory outlives history, encoded not in words or memorials, but in sequences of nucleotides repeating generation after generation. Now that we've seen how Taino, Guanche, and Sephardic ancestries all persisted despite extermination or forced conversion, we can step back and study the deeper pattern they share. 
Across continents, the same biological law repeats. Persecution erases culture faster than chromosomes. The Taino endured as mitochondrial strands. The Guanches persisted as North African haplogroups. The Conversos survived through Levantine subclades of J and T. Each story shows the genome acting as an archive that empires couldn't burn. So extinction, when viewed genetically, is rarely total. It becomes a transformation instead. Every Latino genome records multiple survivals. Threads of erased nations, islands, and beliefs woven into one biological identity. The story of Latin America isn't disappearance, it's inheritance condensed into DNA. When we trace these lines together, the message becomes inescapable. None of these peoples truly vanished. The Taino, once declared extinct, still speak through the mitochondrial vocabulary of Caribbean families. The Guanche Islanders, whose culture dissolved in conquest, live on inside the North African genetic component found from Cuba to Venezuela. And the Sephardic conversos, exiled by fire and decree, remain present in the chromosomes of modern Latin America, joining the hemisphere to the ancient Near East. If we learn one thing from this research, it's that identity cannot be erased by decree. Empires may rewrite maps, but biology rewrites nothing. It remembers. Each new child represents an edited version of history's survivors, an updated record of what humanity refuses to forget. The first mothers and fathers of extinct nations endure through us, encoded as living memory. So, when a DNA test highlights a fragment of Taino, Guanche, or Sephardic ancestry, it's not just a statistic. It's evidence that life keeps recycling its stories. The genome is the ultimate storyteller, preserving voices long silenced. And that biological storytelling turns loss into lineage. If you've already taken a mainstream DNA test and want to explore those deeper ancestral layers, DNAuncovered.com can help reveal the ancient roots hiding within your raw data. Every chromosome carries a clue, and we decode them to restore the forgotten pages of your ancestry. So remember this, what history calls extinction, genetics calls survival. Subscribe to DNA Uncovered for more journeys where science brings lost peoples back into focus, one genome at a time.